tiny abandoned puppy chases cop down the street before he's forced to take action. While patrolling a neighborhood street, two LAPD officers realized they were being followed, but there was no threat to be found. A small dog was fast on their trail. All alone, the puppy would surely not survive out on the busy LA streets. The officers had to make a hard decision, with the innocent creature's life hanging in the balance. What would you do if you found a small, stray puppy? You could always offer over some food or water if you had any on you, but what about after that? A small puppy can't defend itself, not with so many dangers lurking nearby. That very dilemma brought a veteran police unit's routine to a sudden halt. For officers Mercado and Tavera, it began as another hectic day in Los Angeles. With the blur of speeding cars and residents hurrying to important meetings, no one might have spotted the scrawny pup wandering around. The puppy, standing only as tall as an adult's ankle, needed help. On his little feet, the puppy discovered two looming figures in his path that October day. Sure, they weren't as tall as the many buildings the puppy had passed, but one could only imagine how scared the puppy must have been. Except, to the surprise of the looming shadows, the puppy went straight up to them. Mercado and Tavera went out on patrol along Hobart Boulevard, a residential street. Although the puppy had a small frame, two big ears flopped around on his head. They bobbled wildly as the puppy approached Officer Mercado, practically skipping up to him but what did he want? Officer Tavera captured the moment on his phone. Each step that Officer Mercado made, the puppy followed. The officers had suddenly found themselves as animal rescuers, and with the street they were on, an idea came for what to call the bouncing stray. They nicknamed the little puppy Hobart, but the encounter wasn't all fun and games. Seeing how young he was, the officers realized it was dangerous for him to be alone. The two took little Hobart with them and let him enjoy his first police car ride. Meanwhile, they discussed what to do with the little guy. Based on data from the City of Los Angeles Department of Animal Services, little Hobart's backstory wasn't rare. Anywhere between 26,000 to 44,000 stray dogs are estimated to be out on the streets. But Hobart got lucky, at least for the time being. The officers tried to figure out if someone had lost him. During his police cruise, Hobart sat safely in the hands of Officer Tavera as Officer Mercado drove. With no tags to be found on the small puppy, Hobart's future depended entirely on what the officers thought was best. Would Hobart be better in a shelter? From info posted online by the LA-based organization Much Love Animal Rescue, the policemen learned of key steps to be taken when a stray dog is found. If there are no tags or information about the owner, you are legally bound to bring the stray to a shelter. Still, Mercado and Tavera hesitated. Shelters could provide either a very happy or unhappy ending. Many pet owners and their lost friends are reunited in shelters, but if you don't search for the owner on your own with flyers and social media, you have to bring that stray to the shelter with the hope the owner will arrive. If the animal goes unclaimed for five days, they then become eligible for adoption. So if Hobart went to a shelter, there was a decent chance that he'd be reunited with his former owner or would find a new happy home. Still, there was also the undeniable chance that he could die in the organization's custody or even be euthanized. Officer Mercado carefully weighed the pros and cons. Ultimately, he couldn't bear to bring the pup to a shelter. The officer took Hobart into their station where the puppy received an honorary canine title. It came as a fun surprise to many of Mercado's colleagues that such a small pooch could be considered a police dog, but there actually was a precedent for such a situation. Midge, a Chihuahua rat terrier mix, actually earned the Guinness World Record in that category. The 28 centimeter tall, 58 centimeter long official law enforcement work dog belonged to Sheriff Dan McClellan of Ohio. Once she passed her certification in 2006, Midge became a narcotics dog. While Hobart wasn't put to any tests yet, his future did take a turn with one big police decision. Officer Mercado couldn't help himself. He had to keep Hobart by his side. The little puppy never wandered from his sight when they first met, and it was clear to everyone that they had formed a special connection. Officer Mercado opened his home to the puppy, and a new beginning was in store. 
though he was a bit nervous about how Hobart would adjust. To help him settle in, the LAPD went all out in celebrating Hobart's fresh start. They welcomed the young honorary canine as a new member to the family, and they shared the video of the pup first meeting the officers on social media. Before they knew it, that post got a little out of control. The short-legged, big-eared Hobart went viral, and so it wasn't long before he got an Instagram page all to himself. Mercado wrote each post from Hobart's perspective and made it clear how happy he was living with the policeman and his wife. He even got some new nicknames. Hobie or Mr. Man are some of the Mercado's favorites. In their house, Hobart discovered plenty of great sleeping places too. There are so many in fact, the Mercados brought in a new family member, a short, white-furred puppy named Tyson. It's a far cry from Hobie's stint on the streets, and the pup reacted to his new life in heartwarming fashion. Since that fateful day, Hobart and the Mercados have been inseparable, and we really mean that. If his human parents were out and enjoyed a drink from Starbucks, they made sure Hobart enjoyed one as well, and that's not all. Hobart got his first leash, plenty of toys, and even his first Halloween costume. One could only imagine what might have happened if Hobart had not been so curious or courageous and strolled up to the looming officers before him. The Mercado household may never have been the same without Hobart. He has grown to love his parents, new sibling, and the fellow dogs he meets along the way. What will the next chapter look like for him? Certainly a happy one. That was lucky since not all police dogs adjust so quickly. A world away from Hobart, Australian officers had high hopes for a German Shepherd puppy named Gavel. At just six weeks old, he caught the eyes of the Queensland police as they saw great potential in the bright-eyed and bushy-tailed pup. They had big plans for him. Unlike Hobart, little Gavel was bred to live and work with police. He was determined to be granted acceptance into the Queensland Dog Squad as he wanted to follow in the footsteps of his family members. He had a 16-month training program ahead of him, and he was ready to track down some bad guys. Not only was Gavel hoping to make the force proud, but he wanted to make his foster handlers proud too. There were more than just a few pounds on this pup's shoulders as Gavel's as Gavel had people counting on him, the officers were confident he had the right stuff for the lawful job. He is confident, with no nervous tendencies, and shows willingness to retrieve a prey drive, ball drive, and can be motivated by food for a reward, the impressed Queensland Sergeant Hansen gushed in a press release. By this point, it seemed that Gavel was going to be a star student. Before he started his training, though, he made a highly anticipated debut to the public, in 2016, he accompanied Governor Paul de Jersey and his wife at a function dedicated to honoring the Queen's 90th birthday. It was a big day for Little Gavel as he met an aggregation of important human officials such as politicians, judges, business and community leaders, as well as former governors. One of these bigwigs in particular took a liking to Gavel. Former Governor Mary Marguerite Lenin Ford couldn't keep her hands off the warm gavel, which is no surprise considering she owned many German shepherds as a Fernberg resident. However, Gavel's engagement with prestigious government officials was just getting started. Usually, puppers in training are fostered by a fellow Queensland police officer, but Gavel was a bit different. In an unusual turn of events, it was decided he would reside with Governor de Jersey and his wife at the government house. Governor de Jersey made sure to give Gavel a proper tour of his new illustrious home, as well as assist in familiarizing the shepherd with new people, considering his boot camp training was to start soon. This is when a different side of Gavel emerged. Gavel proved to be a big old softy. He'd take resting breaks, play with toys, and stride through the flowers. Gavel got lost in his own downtime, which caused people to raise an eyebrow and wonder how he'd perform on the squad. The official training began with months worth of socialization and obedience practice. As expected, this was not an easy task for the playful shepherd. At 10 weeks old, Gavel still had heaps of uncontrollable puppy energy, which was slightly concerning for a police recruit. Governor de Jersey disclosed to 7 News Brisbane that, at this point, Gavel was still not sleeping through the entirety of the night. Still, no one was ready to give up on Gavel as they figured his maturity milestone was waiting just around the corner. 
As the months went by, that maturity milestone seemed further and further away. Gavel never rounded that monumental bend. It was a tough decision, but the Queensland police reluctantly decided to cut innocent Gavel from the program. In a statement released by the Queensland police, they declared that Gavel did not display the necessary aptitude for a life on the front line. It was a shock to everyone who fell in love with the pooch, but fighting crime just wasn't in the cards for him. In February of 2017, the Queensland police officially discharged Gavel from his training, with graduation just six months away. Subsequently, the question that haunted nearly everyone down under was, what was to come of Gavel? All things considered, he was still staying with the governor of Queensland, which allowed Gavel to live regally. Could it be that he was paired with Governor Paul de Jersey for a reason? Apparently, Gavel's true calling was closer than he thought. On February 21st, 2017, Gavel bestowed a new title, Australia's first ever vice regal dog. The regal family knew he was destined for a more sociable and compassionate position, one that didn't involve sniffing out the bad guys. He has outgrown four ceremonial coats, undergone a career change, and brought untold joy to the lives of the governor, Mrs. De Jersey, government house staff, and thousands of Queenlanders who have since visited the estate, the governor's office raved. To be clear, as a VRD, Gavel still has some important daily duties to conquer, like being a gracious host to guests and entertaining, playing with, tour groups that attend the government house. He wears a specially made government house coat emblazoned with the governor's personal standard, the St. Edward's crown and the Brolga, the official bird emblem of Queensland, the government house disclosed. In case you're doubting the legitimacy of Gavel's role in Australia's government house, he even had to, um, sign a contract. It is still a legal process after all. The regal mongrel adores the outdoors, and sometimes he'll even help the government house's horticulture team with their grueling yard work. Though his version of help generally consists of emotional support, the horticultural team deeply appreciates his assistance. Gavel took a shot in the dark at one career and wound up excelling in an entirely different one. After unexpected failure, Gavel embarked on a new path and everyone was better.